hello there welcome to my channel okay in this video i'm going to explain to you about physics paper 2 22 may june 2021 okay the time duration here is uh, 45 minutes okay now let us go to the first question okay number one which piece of apparatus is the most suitable for measuring the mass of a pencil sharpener okay this is for to measure the mass Okay, now if you look at digital balance, this is the most possible answer. Okay, measuring cylinder is to measure volume. Okay, volume and Newton meter is to measure the force acting on the object. Okay, this is to measure the force. This is also called as a spring balance. Okay, this is also called as a spring balance. Okay, and then this ruler is to measure the length. So, B, C and D uh, is not suitable for to measure the mass. So, the best answer here will be A. Okay, now let us go to this next question. Okay, now number two. Four balls with different masses are dropped from a height shown. Air resistance may be ignored. Okay, which ball has the smallest average speed? Okay, if you look at the question, the four balls with different mass are dropped from the height shown. So they are they will have their own potential energy, and when they are falling, it will be converted into kinetic energy. So potential energy will be converted fully into kinetic energy. Okay, so if you look at the formula here, this is the potential energies formula and it will be converted fully to kinetic energy and this will influence the, the final speed. Alright, so if you look at it here, we do a small calculation, mgh equals to 1 over 2 m v square so we can cancel off the m and we have to make the v as the subject we move the 2 to that side and we will have v square the square move it to the opposite side will become a square root so what influence the speed here the g having a constant value which is 10 2 times 10, we will have a 20 there. So, the height is the one influencing the speed. So, the highest here. So, the highest speed will be 4. So, and but they are asking here is the smallest average speed. So, the DLP, you have to seek for the, the smallest height. So, which is 1 meter. So this is your answer A and this is your explanation. Okay, number three, a ball is thrown vertically upward through the air, air resistance act on the ball. Which graph shows how its speed varies with time? So here, okay now, here's the picture. So just imagine the ball is being thrown out okay so it's starting from here so at the first position the speed is high so we have here a higher speed so the ball is going up and up so over here the speed of the ball will be lower until it reaches to a certain point where it stops okay so until it reaches to a certain point it will stop so here we will have v equals to 0 the speed equals to 0 and then from here it will fall back so once it fall back it will obviously it will start from 0 with a higher speed it will fall down with a higher speed so over here the speed will be high and eventually it will be balanced out with the with the air resistance so at this situation here what happens is the weight of the ball okay here the weight of the ball 
will be balanced out with the air resistance. So here is the air drag. Oh, I just call it as the air resistance. So the speed here will be lower. Okay, so if you follow this, speed is high and is getting lower and eventually becomes zero. So let me draw a graph over here. So starting at higher speed, okay, starting at a higher speed at this point, then it will be going lower until it reach zero. Alright, so here it should be curving in this way. Alright, curving in this way until it reach here zero. So at this point here, will be v equals to 0. Okay, now for this graph, you can compare by doing the tangent of the graph. The line here is sharper, is getting less gradient, the gradient becoming lower until it reaches 0 point. Alright, now on the other side, it will be starting with uh, 0 and it will go to a higher velocity. So, the graph here will be sharper, alright, will be sharper at this point, position number 1, so here will be position number 1, and eventually it will be getting lower. So if the velocity is getting lower, the graph should be curving away like this, okay. So by drawing a tangent line, here is higher gradient. Eventually, the gradient will be lesser and lesser and lesser. Alright, so let us try to find this type of graph in our answer. So look at here. Not A, not the C, not the B. The best answer here will be D. Alright, so I hope you can understand with this uh, drawing of mine. Okay, now let us move to question number 4. Okay, number 4. What is the best description of the meaning of the mass of an object? Okay, if you look at the first one space occupied by the object this one should be volume not mass okay the force that gravity exerts on the object so this one is a gravitational acceleration so which is g tan but still depending on the on the mass okay now look at c the resistance of the object to change its to changes in motion. Okay, this one is okay. This is inertia. Okay, the resistance of the object to changes in motion is linked to inertia, which means larger mass they will have a larger inertia. It means it is easier to move a bicycle or cycle compared to lorries okay and if you look at d the closeness of uh, packing of the molecules in the object this one they are more focusing on a density which gives you the formula mass over volume so your best answer here will be c okay for number five a measuring cylinder contains 40 cm cube of water. A stone of mass 94 gram is lowered into the water so that it is fully submerged as shown. So as you can see here, the volume, the reading here is seventy-five. This is 76 
okay we have to take in this line right so it shows is 76 so 76 minus with the initial volume of the water which gives 36 so this is the volume of the stone okay volume of the stone so we take the mass divided by the volume we will be getting the density of the stone so which is 94 divided by 36 and you'll be getting here 2.6111 so this is what you get in your calculator so your answer here will be donkey d Okay, now we move on with the next point. Okay. Number six, the extension load graph for a spring is shown. The unstretched length of the spring is nine, uh, 17 centimeter. This is the unstretched uh, length, which is the original length of the spring. So when an uh, object when an object is suspended from the spring the length of the spring is 19.2 centimeter what's the weight of the object okay to answer this question we have to use the formula f equals to k x and we have to remember this and uh, this is the extension x is the extension k is the spring constant is the spring constant where you can get from the gradient of this graph this is the force which means the weight of the object so here the extension here is uh, 19.2 minus 17 this is the original length so 2.2 centimeter okay so this is the extension and they are asking us to find the weight of the object so uh, weight of the object so we can look at this graph here so this is 2.2 2.2 is over here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so yeah so 2.2 is this point so let us draw a straight line graph so here it will be exactly at this point okay exactly at this point and it shows it shows it shows exactly three newton all right it shows exactly it's a three newton here Okay, so your answer here will be 3 Newton. Okay, now for number 7. A satellite orbits the Earth in an anticlockwise direction at a constant speed as shown. When a satellite is in the position shown, in which direction does the resultant force act upon it? Okay. Uh, always remember when you have a circular motion okay when you have a circular motion the tension or the resultant force acting on a certain object will be directly directly toward the center okay center of the circle so here will be the force this force is be called as a centripetal force all right so this is a uh, another word for this is a centripetal force so which means your answer here will be d is the centripetal force okay now we move on with question number eight okay a tennis ball has a mass of 57 gram a tennis player hit the tennis ball with a tennis racket. The tennis ball has a velocity of 25 meter 
per second when it hits the racket. The velocity of the tennis ball when it leaves the player's racket is 15 meter per second in the opposite direction. Okay, and then the average force exerted by the tennis racket is about 35 newton. Okay, this is an impulse. This is an impulse force. Okay, so we can use uh, this formula, which is uh, m v minus m u over the time. So for how long is the tennis ball is in contact with the tennis racket? So what we can do here, make the time as a subject. Okay, we factorize the mass. We'll be getting a v minus u over the force. So as an elaboration here, this one will be the u. All right, this is will be the initial 25 and the final velocity here will be will be 50 in an opposite direction since they already mentioned in the question we have to take this as a sign okay so the mass you have to make sure change it into a kilogram 0 0.057 the final velocity is 15 minus all right and here make sure we can change this into a minus 25 since it is coming from the opposite direction so minus 25 so here you'll be getting force is 35 so if you do your calculation here so this one will become a positive so it's a 40 here okay 40 divided by 35 and if you calculate this value you'll be getting 40 35 okay and then your answer here will be this 0 0.065 so make sure when they when they have shown you the direction opposite direction either in words or in picture form make sure you have to take this okay now we move at move to question number nine okay this question is about four methods used to produce electric energy which method has a correct description okay the method here hydroelectric Power station, correct description, okay, energy source is a renewable, we can say yes, I mean carbon dioxide, no, okay, uh, this is a coal fired, fired uh, power station, so this one, it is, it does admit the uh, uh, carbon dioxide okay it, it so should be yes over here wind turbine is a yes it is a renewable resources and then uh, it does not emit carbon dioxide okay nuclear power station it is not renewable energy because nuclear power station they will have a half-life so the material that they are using will be depreciating in their mass time to time so here should be no and this is also no okay your well, best answer here will be a all right now let us move to question number 10 okay a stone is released from rest from a high building on earth air resistance is negligible what is the velocity when it fallen and it has fallen 5 meter okay so here we have to combine the potential energy okay mgh will be equals to the kinetic energies formula and here we can cancel off the mass 
the 2 will move here, it will become 2gh and you will have a v square. So the square, the, the square will move here, it will become, it will become square root. g, they have a fixed value, which is a 10. So 2 times 10 is 20. And then the h. So we can use this 5 to put here. And we will be getting, this is V, we will be getting 20 times 5, which is 100, square root of 100, we will be getting here 10. So the answer here will be boy. Okay. Okay, the power input to an electric motor is 400 watts. Is the power input efficiency of the motor is 85%. How much power is wasted? So, okay, uh, by using the efficiency formula, power out divided by power in multiplied with 100 equals to the, the percentage. So, here 100 move here becomes 0 0.85. And here's power out. Power in is 400. So 400, we multiply this. We will be getting 340. Why? Okay, this is the power, output power. Okay, so the energy wasted here is 400 watt minus with 340 watt. We will be getting here 60 watt. So this is the power that is wasted. Okay, so let me erase this. Okay, so we can answer the question number 12. A book has a mass of 400 gram. A surface of the book is in contact with a table of dimension. Okay, we can calculate this for area. The gravitational acceleration strength is 10. What's the pressure exerted on the table due to the book? So here we can use pressure equals to force over area. So the force here will be, change this one to, here will be the weight, weight of the book. Okay, weight of the book. So here will be 0 0.4. Kg. We can use this as well. So here 0 0.4 times with 10, you'll be getting here 4 Newton. So the 4, we can substitute the F, 4 over, and now we have to calculate the area here, 0 0.1 times with 0 0.2. So you'll be getting here about 0 0.02 which will give you which will give you 200 okay the here will be the 200 so answer here will be dunk b okay now we move on with question number 13 Uh, okay, let me erase this. Okay, a horizontal metal plate of area 0 0.5 lies at the bottom of the lake of depth 40 meter. Density of the water is 1000 and the gravitational field strength is 10. Okay, what is the downward force acting on the plate due to the water? Okay, for you to understand this question, let me draw a plate over here. Okay, this is the plate. This is the plate. Okay, the area here is uh, 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Okay, and then based on this, we need to calculate the pressure first. So, pressure under the liquid is being calculated by using formula H. Uh, H rho and g h stands for the 
height okay which is 40 times with the density this is the density so which is a uh, thousand multiply with the gravitational field strength which is 10 so all together the pressure that is acting on the plate okay uh, is about 4 400,000 Pascal okay so this is the value of the pressure so now they are asking the force downward force so we have to use another formula pressure equals to force over area so the pressure here is 400 okay let me minimize this so the pressure here is uh, 400,000 force over area area is a 0 0.5 okay so the 0 0.5 will multiply here and the force is 200,000 so you can put that 200 kilo newton all right so your answer here will be c 200 newton okay now if you look at number question number 14 which row describes the force between the molecules and the motion of the molecules in a gas? Okay, let me erase this. Okay, now, uh, forces between the molecules, between molecules. So, you have to remember gas. Inside here is a strong covalent bonding. Okay, it's a strong covalent bond. But in between, between the molecules, we will have a very weak force. This, call, this force is called as a Van der Waals force. So, it is weak. And motion of the molecules will be more free. Okay, vibrating is only for solid. So, your best answer here will be C. Okay, number 15. A very small pollen grain uh, suspended in water, a bright light shines from the side. Okay, this is the bright light. Okay, when looked at through a microscope, a small speck of light was seen to be moving in a random, jerky manner. So, look at the question. Okay. What are the moving speck of the light? Okay, so the over here, the pollen grain inside the water will be seen, okay, in the microscope. We cannot see the molecules of water in microscope. So what happened over here is, the pollen grain will be hit by water. So that's how they created a jerky manner. So it was hit by water molecules. So this is your answer okay now we look at the next one okay a hole is drilled in a metal plate what happened to the length of the plate and to the diameter of the hole when the plate is pulled okay when a hole is drilled with in a metal plate Okay, so what happened? There will be a friction force and which causes the hole to, to be uh, in a very hot. Okay, it will be very hot. So, after you let it to be cold, so what happened? It will reduce in size slightly, smaller. So, the length of the plate and the diameter of the hole, right? Well, both decreases because it is a metal plate. So, what is cold, they will shrink. So, this is your answer. Okay, for number 17, which statement describes a sensitive liquid in glass thermometer? Okay, the meaning here, the sensitive here, all right. So, when you have a slight uh, temperature change, Example like 0 0.1 degrees Celsius, the changes in the uh, in the length 
of the liquid okay it will be higher so they can detect a small change in the temperature so let us look at the at the answers here a thermometer which can be used to measure very high and very low values of the temperature it means like they are increasing like normally the, temp the temperature for the scale temperature scale for thermometer is 0 to 100 so very low and high may, might be z negative 10 to 120 or 110 degrees celsius so this is not okay a thermometer which gives the same increase in length for each degree of a temperature rise okay this is not the case a thermometer which is accurate because it has been calibrated or thermometer must be calibrated before it's used so this statement is not right okay a, a thermometer which gives a large increase in the length of liquid column for each degree of the temperature rise here this is the meaning of the sensitive okay this is the meaning of the sensitive it means when you have a slight increase 0 0.1 degree celsius the changes is high so this is sensitive okay this is your best answer here okay now for 18 a block of aluminium has a mass of 2 kg initial temperature is 20 it absorbs 7300 joule of uh, thermal energy okay specific okay this is a c value 913 final temperature of the aluminium block so we can use m equals to q equals to mc theta here will be 7300 2 kg and uh, here will be 913 and here the changes here will be okay we just make it in this way so we just have to find the theta's value so 7300 divided by 2 times 913 so we find these values first okay so i am getting here about 4 degrees celsius the changes is 4 degrees celsius so if it's a initial is 20 so the final will be about 24 degrees okay so the answer here is c Okay, we move on with number 19. Okay, let me erase this. Okay. Here are some results from a survey. Okay, a student set up four cans. Each can contains the same mass of water, 90 degrees. A can are identical except for the outside surface. Which can can cool down the fastest? Okay, let's say I draw here can. So, the black color surface, okay? If you look at the black color surface, they are also good absorber and also good emitter. So, if you have a black color here, so what happens they will emit out the heat more faster compared to the to the white surface okay so black and when it is dull so what happens is when it dull they do when they are dull they are also a good emitter okay so remember this dull and black they are both a good absorber and also a good emitter of heat. So, the answer here is A. Okay, look at 20. Thermal energy is transferred 
by conduction in a metal bar which statement is not correct so okay in this case I'm um, a metal bar so let, let me draw like a few uh, solid atoms over here okay they are touching each other and they are vibrating once the heat energy is being transferred so what happened here is the atoms will be in a very high vibrating at a vibrating at a very high rate so they will pass down to each another so when they pass 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 to the next atoms so the entire matter will get hot okay so this is the concept of a thermal energy transferred by conduction so now this statement is not correct okay fast vibrating ions leaves the surface this is not right but let us go through the next one free moving electrons carry thermal energy through the bar not really it's the atoms vibration okay it is the atoms vibration and also you can see it is correct okay iron vibrates and strike neighboring ions to make them vibrate yes is correct okay ion vibrate but do not change position yes they are at the same position so here the not correct one is a okay okay for number 21 a water wave pass into a region where the wave travels more slowly so you have to remember this formula when you have a, a speed refracted angle and also the lambda the wavelength okay this is all is a directly proportional so what happens if the if the wave travels more slowly it means you have a lower speed obviously you will have a, a lower refracted angle and here you have a smaller wavelength so as it passed into the slow region what happens to the frequency and what happened to the wavelength of the wave so the wavelength of the wave i have answered you it will decrease okay this one will decrease and the frequency okay for refraction process refraction process the frequency does not change all right so your answer here will be c okay now let us look at number 22 okay light traveling at a speed of okay this is the light speed strikes the surface of the glass block Okay, so it means if this is air and this is glass and undergoes diffraction as it enters the block. The diagram shows a ray of this light before and after it enters the block. Alright, so here the speed of light in the glass. So first we need to find out the refractive index. So this is the sine i and this is the sine r. So we have the incident. This is the incident, which is a 55. And here will be sine 30. Let me zoom it. Okay, it's 33. 55 and 33. So here we will have. 1.5 okay 1.5 is supposed to be 1.504 okay we are going to use the same reflective index this is a speed of light uh, in air and this is a speed of light in the medium okay so here we have 1.5 and here is 3 times uh, 10 to the power of 8 this is the speed in the medium so we can do the calculation 
speed in the medium equals to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by 1.5. So here you will be getting here about 2 times 10 to the power of 10. So this is a speed. Okay, so answer is boy here. Okay, now let us move on with the next one. Okay, which statement about the image of an object formed in the plane mirror is correct? So it's a plane mirror, so it should be, let's say it's the plane mirror. Let's say you are standing it over here. The distance. Uh, okay, this is the, the real you and this is the image. Okay, this is the image. So you will have the same distance and exactly same size. So you will have a uh, boy as your answer. This is smaller, wrong, larger, wrong, inverted, wrong. Okay, so you have the same size because this is a plain mirror. Okay, number 24, an object, okay, an object is placed in front of a thin converging lens. The diagram shows the path of two rays from the top of the object. An image of the object is formed on the screen to the right of the lens. So, which means it is here, somewhere here, okay. How does this image compact with the object? So what we can do here, we need to complete this because they did not give us... Uh, okay, here is the... So let us draw this. Okay, I hope it's straight. Okay, and then over here... Let me try to use a different color. Okay, it is straight. Okay, I'm going to use the same thing from here. Okay. Okay, make sure the line is uh, exactly parallel to the what you are drawing. Okay, so this is the intersection point. Okay, this is the intersection point here. It's the intersection point. And as you can see this, the image is larger. Okay, the image is larger and it is being inverted okay so it's larger and also is being inverted so this is your answer a okay we move on with the next one 25 okay here here are three statements about the speed of electromagnetic waves Okay, uh, when you are saying about electromagnetic waves, it is, you have, uh, you have radio, you have micro, you have infrared, you have uh, visible light, you have UV, X-ray, and also gamma ray. Okay, this is a gamma ray. So all this will be traveling at the speed of light. Okay, now we look at this. Number one, the speed of electromagnetic waves in vacuum is 340. This is the speed of sound. Okay, so this is not correct. Okay, now the speed of the electromagnetic wave in the vacuum is the speed of light. Yes, this is right. The speed of electromagnetic waves in vacuum is approximately the same as in the air. Yes. 
it is okay so the answer is uh, 2 and 3 c okay, number 26 the sound from a loudspeaker must pass through two materials to reach a microphone okay so okay which combination of material gives the shortest time for the sound to reach the microphone to material okay so please remember so we have here air water and solid so sound travel sound travel fastest in solid okay sound travel fastest in solid and then in liquid the slowest is in gas this is the slowest so if they are asking for the shortest time we have to find both are solid so which is copper and also aluminium so your answer here will be c Okay, the next one, 27. Okay. Which method does not demagnetize a magnet bar? So, the, to demagnetize a magnet bar, you have a few methods. One, you can heat it. Heat with a hammer. Okay. Uh, and you can heat it up with a fire and you can place it in ac ac supply okay this is the way to demagnetize the magnet okay so we just go through one by one here hit the bar yes obviously and heat it hammer yes okay this one is a connection to ac supply yes it will demagnetize look at the last one connected to a dc supply so this is wrong okay this will not demagnetize the magnet bar so this is your answer Okay, now we let us okay a magnet is suspended from a uh, suspended by a cotton thread the magnet is displaced then allowed to swing freely until it come to rest why does the magnet always come to rest pointing in the same direction okay normally uh, when you do this experiment all right so it will always will show at the north side okay it will show in the same direction this is due to it will synchronize with the magnetic field of the earth so this magnetic field will synchronize with the magnetic field of the earth okay this is the explanation so now let us go through one by one interaction between electric field of the magnet and the electric field of the earth no should be magnetic field this is wrong all right this is wrong should be magnetic field now over here magnetic field of the magnet and gravitational field this is also wrong and because it interact between magnetic field of the magnet and magnetic field of the earth yes this is right so this is your answer Okay, now for number 30, a student wraps a plastic rod with a cloth and the rod becomes a positively charged. What has happened to the rod? So what happened here is, okay, normally you have to understand, when you have a two materials, the proton does not move, 
let's say here we have a three proton three at each side okay this is neutral so when they rub each another so what happens is uh, this the material this the material so uh, the the one that loses electron will be uh, positively charged and then when the electron transferred to the next one you will have you will have a negative charged so these are the electron and this material will become a negatively charged okay so this is what what actually happened so 30 if you look at it it loses electron and the proton does not change its position okay so this is the explanation for this okay now look at number 31 okay an isolated metal sphere is positively charged it is then brought near to another isolated metal sphere that is neutral Okay, and then what happened to the charges of the neutral sphere as the positively charged sphere is brought close to it? Okay, this is neutral and this is a positively charged metal. Okay, when the metal sphere is being moved to this side, right? So what happened when you have a neutral, obviously you will have a negative charges. So what happened over here is the positive remains, the positive in this neutral metal sphere remains, but these negative charges will, will be transferred to the positively charged metal sphere. Okay, now look at uh, the answers. Okay, some positive charge move. Okay, this is wrong. Alright, this is wrong. So now, the positive charge that do not move, yes some negative charge move to the left yes correct so this is your answer so always remember positive charge do not move no move okay now we look at number 32 okay for number 32 which circuit has a zero reading on the emitter and you can notice that they attach a diode when they attach a diode, you have to understand it allow the current in this way. Okay, they allow the current. So if you put uh, in the opposite direction, they will block the current in this way. Okay, so now the current flows here and they allow it. Yes, so you will have a reading over here. Now look at, uh, okay, look at B current will flow in this way and the diode allows it yes you will have the reading and here the same thing for C they allowed so you'll have the reading but if you look at here the current flows first diode it managed to go through the first diode but it's stuck at the second diode so this is the problem so here you will have a zero reading. The answer is donkey here. Okay, now 33. There are two 10 ohm resistors connected in series and then it's parallel. Connected in series and then in parallel. Okay, what is the combin combined resistance in each case? Okay, this is the easy question. So when you have a in series, is a 10 ohm and 10 ohm so you will be getting here about 20 ohm when it's in parallel so what happened you can either use the formula or we just divide it by 2 so which is 1 over 10 1 over 10 this is our total so here you have 2 over 10 and make sure you invert this 10 over 2 so which give you about 5 ohm so 20 ohm for series and 5 ohm for the parallel. So your answer here is C.
Okay, now look at number 35. Okay, the diagram shows a combination of a four logic gates that produce an output signal at R. Okay, that depends on the state of the input P and Q. Which single logic gate produce? Produce the same effect as the combination. Okay, in this case, we need to do a simple testing here. Okay, let's say this is a, we do a truth table for P and Q, yeah? P, Q, and here is R. So first, what happens is we put here 0, 0. We see what happened now. 0, 0. This is a NOT gate, okay? This is a NOT. This is an AND gate. And this is a also a NOT gate. So here we'll be getting 1, 1, which will turn on the AND gate, and here you get 0. So your answer here is 0. Next is 0, 1. So let me erase the existing. Okay, so here you have 0, 1, and here will be 1, 0, will not turn on the AND gate so here you have answer 0 which will turn on ok now we try 1 0 ok it is a 1 0 here will be getting 0 here is 1 0 and here will be 1 if it is 1 1 let us try this out. Okay, if it's a 1, 1, both will be getting 0, in which you will get here <coughs> 0, 2, and will be converted to 1. So this is a OR gate. Okay, we can replace it with a, with a simple uh, single logic gate, which is a OR gate. Okay, number 35, a solenoid is connected to a very sensitive emitter. A rod is inserted into one end of the solenoid. The emitter shows there is a small electric current in the solenoid while rod is moved. It's moving. Okay, which rod is being inserted? So, in order for you, for them to produce the electricity, you must have a magnetic flux, magnetic uh, field being cut, okay, magnetic field being cut. So, that's how, okay, so let me just write it down, when a conductor cuts a magnetic field, it will generate a uh, induced current. Okay, so here there is uh, only one choice over here. This one must be. Okay, this one the rod here must be must be a magnetized or must be a magnet. Okay, for them to produce these results, so your only one choice is magnetized steel rod. Not radioactive, not uncharged, not heated. So remember this. Let me write it down properly. When a conductor cuts a magnetic field, okay, or magnetic flux, it will generate induced current in the conductor. Alright, so this is the concept of the induced current. Okay, now let us move on with number 36. Okay, the diagram shows a transformer. The output, what is the output voltage? Okay, so here we can use the formula Vp, the primary, okay, and P, Vs, and S. 
So the VP here is uh, 550 divided by, oh sorry, this is, VP is uh, 22,000 divided by 550. And here is unknown. The turn for the secondary coil is 115. So we can do the calculation like this 22,000 multiply with 115 divided by 550 Vs. So this is the, the voltage at the secondary point. So I'm getting here about 4,600 volt. Okay, so you answer here C. Which row correctly states how nuclei behave during a nuclear fission and during nuclear fusion? Okay, during the fusion, wait, okay. during fission, and this is during fusion. Okay, during fusion, what happens is two small nuclei will combine, will heat and combine to form a bigger one. Okay, they'll join together to form a bigger one. Okay, for, for fission, you have a large nuclei and it will be bombarded with a neutron and it will split into uh, smaller atoms all right it will split into a smaller atoms so split apart and join together so this is your answer c okay number 38 the charge on a proton is e if a proton is e then for electron will be negative e and a neutron is a zero okay so what is the charge on an electron and what is the charge on a neutron? So it should be D as your answer. Okay, now look at number 39. Uh, some radioactive nuclei decay to give a new nuclei, which are also radioactive. Okay, <coughs> and in a part of the series, of decay shown. How many decay involve the emission of a beta? Beta, okay, remember this. Alpha is 4 to helium and beta here is 0, negative 1 electron. Okay, this will take a little bit of space. So, let me crop this. Let me crop this. I'll explain to you right here. <coughs> okay, what happened over here is, uh, just remember when you have a alpha, it's a 4 to helium, and a beta here is 0, negative 1 electron. So, if you look at here, this part, they will the this one will be plus together with a 4 to helium so if you look at it 2 3 4 plus with 4 you are getting a 2 3 8 and the 90 here will be plus with 2 to get this so this one it only releases alpha okay when you compare the th and the pa all right so over here uh, you have the changes of electron when you have the same thing when you have the same nucleon number okay two three four and two three four and this one they'll release a beta so let me show you here the equation th okay th then you have a two three four pa 
91 and they will plus with the lateral. So now you see it makes sense, right? So here's the beta. Okay, like from here to here, when you have the same, okay, 2, 3, 4 and 2, 3, 4 and here they re release uh, another beta. <coughs> okay, now when you compare this, uh, you will, the releases alpha, 4, 2, helium. So look at the numbers. 4 plus with this one, you'll be getting 2, 3, 4. And 2 plus with 90, you'll be getting 92. Okay, now from here to here is also alpha. So there is a 3 alpha being released and 2 beta. Okay, so there will be 2 answers, 2 beta answers. Because they are asking specifically for emission of the beta. There will be 2. Okay, now let us look at the, uh, the last one. Okay. So here, for 40, the graph shows the activity of a radioactive source over a period. Okay, now what is the half-life? They are asking for the half-life. So, which is half-life. So, half-life Okay, so the original This is the original 120, alright This is the original. So, it will be divided into half into 60 Into 60 Within the time of uh, 2 minutes Alright within the time of uh, 2 minutes. So your answer here will be boy. Alright. So guys, so this is the, the IGCSC physics paper 22. So thank you for watching. So if you have any question, please comment below. And thank you very much. Uh, please like and subscribe this channel. Thank you very much.